This is the chassis of Astoka Trails, and today we are going to fully disassemble the front frame and discuss various problems that can occur with the front frame and the front wheels, such as that they wobble when you go at speed, or that they fall out uh, and don't lock properly into the front frame, and really anything else that you might have, have uh, as problems with the front wheels and the front frame, uh, so that you can kind of troubleshoot uh, your own situation. So the most common problem that you're going to get with the front end of a stock of trails, especially the older models, in particular the older models, is that the front wheel forks are going to get a little bit loose in the front wheel frame. And what this is going to do is make the wheels have a tendency to rotate like this and wobble sort of erratically when you go at speed. And this is actually a problem that they have dealt with uh, by upgrading front wheels. So if you have this problem, and when you pull out your wheels, they look like this on top. You can buy a new set of wheels that will have this suspension pad here and will come with these additional pads here that can be screwed in just like this. There's a pair of screws, you unscrew them, pop this in. And what this is gonna do is uh, give added support to the front wheels in order to prevent this problem in a couple of different ways. Uh, the reason the problem was occurring originally is that there's like a lock inside that I'm going to show you when I disassemble the front frame and uh, that lock is higher up inside the shaft and that's really the only point at which the axle was held. Uh, what this means is that the rest of the axle starts to widen out the channel down here at the bottom. When you install the suspension pads, uh, you're adding a second point, which is this harder plastic circle here. Over, which is going over the shaft at the point at which it's been widened so that the axle is then being held both at the bottom and the top. In addition to this, the wheels themselves have a spring-loaded uh, pad here which is going to help to absorb any of that shock and uh, prevent that axle from doing more damage to the front frame. So if you're having wobbly wheel problems, the number one thing you can do is to replace the front wheels. Okay, let's say that the wobbling isn't that pronounced and you don't want to invest in a new set of wheels, you'd rather have a uh, do-it-yourself sort of solution, then there are a couple things you can do. Uh, number one is to check the axle on the wheel itself and see if it's loose. That means that when you turn it, it will rotate inside the fork. Uh, now these older axles are a little bit hard to tighten the way they're supposed to be tightened, which is that you remove the wheel and there's a bolt underneath, uh, simply because it's very hard to hold the axle. Uh, the newer wheels, have a little uh, screw bit hole in the top so that it's a lot easier to screw them on tighter. Uh, if you're unable then to get at the bolt and tighten it that way, you can actually fix it with a little bit of super glue. You just want to put a bit in around the axle and then twist it so that, that glue kind of falls down inside. And then before it entirely hardens on the outside, you just want to wipe off the excess. You can do the same thing for the pat, the uh, washer that's on top. There's always a notch in the washer. Just put a little bit of the glue there where that notch is and spin the washer a bit and it'll kind of work its way in. And again, clean off the excess glue. And if you wait a few minutes, this will the glue will have gone down inside and made that axle and that top plate sufficiently hard. Uh, that by itself is not enough to entirely fix your wobbling problems, but a lot of times that wobbling problem is exacerbated by a loose axle in the front wheel. The second thing you can do is to properly lubricate the front end, and there's really only one lubrication for the Stoka Trails, uh, and that is viral food industry grease. Uh, the reason for this, you could use some uh, forms of silicon putty, but the reason uh, to be careful is that the wrong lubrication will actually make the problem worse. Uh, but using something like this, which is thick and is not particularly slippery, it, ha it creates a certain um, tension against movement. So it's like it's lubricating in a way, it's providing a uh, protective layer between the front fork and the front frame, but at the same time, uh, it, it makes it turn a little bit slower, if you can think as though you were driving through mud or something. So put a generous helping of viral food industry grease on here. And if you've already lubricated something else, you do want to wash all that out first and let it dry. And then you can pop it in place and that will help a bit. Again, depending on how far the problem has gotten. 
Um, other solutions without purchasing front wheels, which again is the best solution, are to use either O-rings or wave washers. Uh, but then you have to measure your size properly. And these will function very much the same way as the suspension pad by creating a certain spring-loaded effect as the wheel goes, pops in place, and uh, keeping it from being able to move erratically and widen out further that channel. Okay, the second problem we want to deal with with front ends, front frames, is where the wheel falls out. And the most common cause of that is that portions here on the inside where the wheel locks in place of this sort of plastic ribbing network have broken. So again, the axle is going to go into this hole here in the center, but there are these ribbing bits here. And most commonly when your wheel is falling out is that one portion of this sort of side circular wall has cracked somewhere. Uh, again, the best is to replace the part in general, which would be the entire front frame. Um, however, I have seen uh, successful DIY solutions where you use the fact that there are hollow spaces around the central circle in order to, using very good um, glues, glue in hard pieces of plastic in order to build up pressure to further hold this channel in tightly. So if you have like a single crack and that's causing the wheel then to fall out, you can fill in cut pieces of plastic so that they tightly fit inside and glue them in in order to hold that entire chamber uh, solidly together. Now, if uh, your wheel is falling out and you notice that there is no cracks here, it can be the fault of the actual locking mechanism inside braking. And so now we're going to disassemble the entire front frame so you can see how the mechanism works from the inside and uh, how to replace this part if you need to. Okay, first step in removing the front frame is to unscrew the shopping basket. You're going to need the CRV T20 star-shaped head for these two screws here in the front. Just unscrew them. Pull them out. Pop up that plastic frame, detach it. Frame for the shopping basket, detach from the actual front frame. Then we're going to flip the entire chassis upside down. And there are two rivets here and here that need to be drilled out. You want to be careful while you're drilling them out uh, so that you don't go all the way through and make a hole on the other side on the front of your frame. Uh, I use a five millimeter metal drill bit. Uh, you could also use a four and a half. And you're just going to kind of pop off the upper ring first and then carefully work out the rest of the rivet. Okay, once you've drilled out those rivets then, you can pull off the front frame. It'll come with these uh, side metal profile pieces. And there are going to be a couple of rivets heads in here, so I'll just shake them out right away. It's no fun when you put your stroller back together and then it's rattling and you got to re-drill your rivets. Okay, so front frame is removed. Now we're going to disassemble it so you can see inside where that locking mechanism is in case that is the cause of your wheels falling out. Now that was also the way, of course, of removing the front frame in case you're gonna just replace the entire front frame. On the bottom are a lot of screws and you're gonna need that CRV T20 head and just screw them all out. Maybe four here on this back portion or inner portion of the front frame. And there are two in each wheel well. And these are again the uh, screws that are involved if you want to install the uh, plates for the new front wheels. We have another video which shows you how to do that as well. It's a lot shorter than this one. All of these screws are the exact same length, so you don't have to worry about keeping them separate for their placement on the frame.
pop that off. Underneath you'll find an additional two hiding screws. Okay, at this point, you can separate the two halves of the front frame. The top is just a cover. In the front here, then you can see the locking mechanisms for the wheels themselves. It's a very common sort of a system. I'm just gonna pop off this spring so we can pull it out. That one really popped off. And then there's a little tab here. I'm just gonna press it down and that allows you to slide it through the back. So then the way that this uh, mechanism works is that on the inside of this arch is a lip and this lip locks, of course, right into that notch on the inside of the axle, like this. Pop this piece back in place first. The axle is gonna come up through. And it's gonna be flush with that plastic. And then the spring pulls this back and it holds it in tight right under the upper lip here. Uh, in most cases then, if it's not the bottom part of the frame uh, as the culprit for why your wheel is falling out, it's going to be that this inner part of the portion of the arch uh, has simply worn down too much. In which case, what you're going to need to do is to replace this piece. Now, this place, piece is a relatively simple plastic piece. Uh, I doubt you're going to get it from the manufacturer. But if you take this with you to a 3D printing service and maybe take the other one as well, the non-damaged one, uh, then they can probably print you off a new piece relatively easily. In order then to put it back together, again, just want to insert it through the back. And before you pop it in all the way, fit your spring onto that little peg there. And then there's also a very tiny peg on the inside here. You just want to position it correctly. And then snap it in. And then we're just going to uh, reverse the process of screwing the entire front frame back together. So. Okay, while you're screwing those in, remember to leave the one, if you look at this as a constellation of three points, the one in the center is open uh, because that is the hole for the screws for the shopping basket. Uh, the other ones get screws. I'm gonna take our profiles, pop them back on part ways, then slot the entire front frame back here, make sure everything fits in place, slide the whole thing in, and then we're going to re-rivet. Go. And the last step is just to put that shopping basket back in place. It's easier if you fold the chassis a little bit as you're doing this to give yourself some space. We have another video on how to attach and detach the shopping basket if you need to see a little bit closer how this works. I'm just putting that shopping basket frame back in its proper peg holes and then screwing it in. Okay, so now your front frame is back in place. 
So in any case, that was our guide to troubleshooting the main problems with the front frame and front wheels being uh, whether when the front wheels are wobbling when you go at speed and when they fall out. Uh, we have other videos that show disassembly to some extent of the front wheels and we will be making one in the future that has to do with the swivel lock. We hope this video was useful to you and if it was, we ask that you subscribe as it helps us continue making videos in the future. Thank you.